Hello everyone, today we will be looking at the Precision Piezo Orion Z Probe Kit, which is a Z Probe that costs about £35 from the Precision Piezo store. It mounts on top of the hot end and uses the nozzle as the probe itself. This means that there is no X and Y offset and the Z offset is usually about 0.1 millimeters, basically the distance between your nozzle and the heat pad. It fits all genuine E3D hotends and it will most likely fit the most of the clone E3D hotends as well just fine. It has two mounting options, one is a screw mount which allows you to attach it to your X carriage directly, mostly used for Bowden setups, and the other way is to use the groove mount which is just attaches under your direct drive extruder using the same place that the normal hotend attaches to. The way that this sensor works is pretty simple, there are two piezo transducer discs inside which emit a voltage when depressed, basically when the nozzle touches the bed, and the PCB has a chip to determine if it's triggered or not and sends that signal to the your control board. Also on the PCB there is a potentiometer that is used to set the sensitivity of the sensor, so if you think that your sensor is too sensitive or not sensitive enough, you can adjust that using it, that trim pot, and if you want a tutorial on that, I'll have one linked in the description below from their official YouTube channel. As far as the firmware is concerned, this is the same thing as a switch as a Z-Probe. The sensor comes as a kit, but it is mostly assembled. You just need to put the PCB between the two included plastic pieces and also attach the hot end. In total, it is five screws and it should take less than a minute. It is also very easy to figure out how to assemble, so you probably won't need a tutorial, but if you do, I also have that linked in the description below from their official YouTube channel. One of the biggest advantages of the sensor according to them is the accuracy. While I don't have the necessary equipment to test their claim of 5 micrometer accuracy, I can say that it is very accurate, the readings between each test that I do is very minor, so it's measuring it very well. And my favorite advantage of the sensor is the reliability. There really isn't much that can go wrong with the parts of the sensor and as a result it is very reliable. Just as reliable as a good quality micro switch when you use it as a Z probe but without the accuracy problems that comes with those. And yeah this is also way better than something like uh, BL Touch which is a accurate enough mechanical Z probe that has a deploy probe etc system but it is extremely unreliable. I had to do 4 or 5 runs with uh, 5 x five, 5 mesh pad level compensation until it worked and measured properly before I switched to Duet Wi-Fi in case you are a channel subscriber. With this it just works right. It gets it in one attempt right and I don't have to repeat the test again which is you know, the best that you can wish for. So, so far I only talked about the upsides of the sensor. Unfortunately, there are a few areas where I will be negative as well. Firstly, the trickiness of getting the travel speed during the probing right. This might sound unrelated, but it is really not. The problem is that sensor is usually too sensitive and any of the axis movements can trigger it. Because of this, you need to slow down the travel speeds by quite a bit. Like I had to reduce it to like one tenth of the stock speeds that I was using before and those stock speeds weren't too high to begin with. So yeah, it can you need to adjust that according to your experience. As long as the sensor isn't triggering by the axis movements, which you should be able to tell by just watching the sensor probe, you are fine. But yeah, this will probably take a few hours of frustrating tinkering to get the firmware settings right about this. So. This is a big downside in my opinion when you are just starting to use the sensor but after you set it up it really isn't a big deal because you already got it right and the settings really don't drift off over time obviously because it's set in the firmware so yeah after that it works very reliably. The next downside is the leftover filament on the nozzle and the dripping filament when the nozzle is hot. Because the sensor uses the nozzle as the probe, the nozzle needs to be clean without any excess filament on the nozzle. If there is any excess filament on the nozzle, it will measure wrong because of the added height from the leftover filament. You also cannot probe at the printing temperature because it will most likely drip a bit 
and because of that drip it will obviously increase the height again and it will measure inaccurately. So the solution is to keep the nozzle clean and probe with the cold hot end right? Unfortunately no. Because the sensor mounts on top of the hot end and the hot end is a long metal piece, it expands while heating and to reduce the effect of this expansion you need to probe at an intermediary temperature. 130 degrees Celsius is their recommendation for this but you can get a better temperature by tinkering with the settings if you're interested in that. From my experience the 130 degrees just works just fine so I didn't bother with that. Also don't forget to set this in your g-code as well for the start g-code on your slicer if you don't set that up properly it will obviously the default for most slicers is to just probe at the printing temperature which obviously as i explained it won't work so you need to make sure the bed is heated then heat the nozzle to 130 degrees celsius then probe and then heat to the printing temperature for the nozzle the reason that i say to heat the bed to the whatever temperature that you set it at is because the beds on the 3D printers tend to bend a little bit when heated and to compensate for that it's just a good idea to probe when the bed is at the operational temperature. And lastly I'll also complain about the price a bit. While I think the price is justified for the accuracy and the reliability, if you look at this from the bomb cost perspective bill of materials there really isn't much in the sensor so yeah it definitely doesn't cost them too much to produce the sensor so there is a pretty significant premium over the price but still I can highly recommend the sensor for the accuracy and reliability alone I also have quite a few other positives that I mentioned in this video as well and if you're interested in purchasing one I'll have a link in the description below which goes to their store which is precisionpiezo.co.uk if you want to go there manually and I hope you found this review video useful if you did please give me a like down below if you're interested in seeing this in action you can watch my Black Widow mod series I think I started installing this in part 20 or 21 the playlist for the Black Widow series will be on the screen right now on the left side so if you're interested in that just click on the playlist there and other than that thanks for watching